Hello, welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 73 of ASP.NET video series. In this session, we'll discuss about logging exceptions to the Windows Event Viewer. In the previous session, we discussed about the Windows Event Viewer itself. As part of that, we have discussed how to create a custom Windows log and a custom Windows source. In fact, if you remember, we have created this custom Windows log Prajim Tech. If you haven't watched the previous session, I would strongly encourage you to do so before continuing with the session. In this part of the video session, we'll discuss about logging exceptions to this custom Windows log Prajim Tech. I have an ASP.NET web application project here. On this web form 1, I have a grid view control. And this web, when this web form 1 loads up, we are creating an instance of this data set object. And then this data set object has got this read XML method, which is trying to read the XML data from countries uh, .xml, and that data will be loaded into the data set, which in turn we are setting as the data source for the grid view control. And finally, we are calling the data bind method. But then if you look at this project, it doesn't have this countries.xml file. So obviously, when we run this, we get a file not found exception. And when that happens, we want to log that exception to this custom Windows log Prajim tag. Let's see how to do that. In order to do that, I'm going to add a class file to this project. I'm going to call that class file as logger.cs. Let me add that. That should add the class, public class logger. And this class is going to contain a method called log method. And this is a static method. And then if you look at this method, it's actually taking in an exception object as a parameter. So whenever an exception happens within an application, you know, we call this method pass it the exception object. And this method is going to take up the responsibility of logging that exception to the Windows event viewer. We'll talk about this code in just a bit. First, let's resolve some of the errors that we have here. Now, the string builder class is not recognized. That's because the string builder class is present in a uh, system.txt namespace. And along the same lines, we have another error here. This event log class is not recognized. That's present in system.diagnostics namespace. So let's go ahead and import that as well. So system.diagnostics. So at this point, we don't have any compilation errors. OK, so what we have to understand at this point is that we have a class called logger, which has got the static method log that takes in an exception object. When we pass an exception object to this method, it's going to take up the responsibility of logging that to the Windows event viewer. So anywhere we have an exception, we can pass that exception to that method. Now, if you look at the code that we have here, it's present in the page load event. But then we don't have any try catch block here. So obviously, if there is an exception that get rolled up till the page level because if it, it's not handled in page load event so it gets rolled up till the page level and at the page level we don't have page underscore error event handler so obviously it's going to uh, propagate one more level up till the application level and at the application level we have this global dot asax file which has got application underscore error event handler this gets executed so we are going to handle that her error here now we need to get a reference of that exception. So how do we do that? We have the server object, and it has got this get last error method that returns an exception object back. You can see the return type. And I'm going to use a variable of type exception to store that object. OK, so we have the exception object. If that exception object is not null, then what we want to do, we want to log that. So if the exception object is not equal to null, then we want to log it to the Windows Event Viewer. Now, to do that, we can make use of that logger class, which we have just created. We'll talk about this log method in just a bit. And then it has got that log method. So we're going to use that method. So logger.log. And then I'm going to pass that this exception object. OK, so the exception is logged now. What we need to do, we need to clear the error. And to do that, call server.clear error. And finally, redirect the user to the custom error page. I have a page here, a custom error page, errors.aspx. And this is a very simple page that has got this uh, you know, uh, simple message that lets the user know that there is an application error. So I'm going to redirect the user to this page. So let's copy the name of that. Let's go to global.asax. And then let's use server.transfer. And I'm going to specify the URL. So tilde forward slash errors.aspx. 
Okay, so at this point, let's go ahead and run this. Now, when we run this, the exception will be unhandled at the page level. It gets rolled up till the application level. At the application level in global.asax, we are handling that exception, logging that to the Windows event viewer, and then redirecting the user to errors.aspx. And if you look at the URL, you will still see webform1.aspx. That's because we used server.transfer. All right, now let's go ahead and look at the event viewer. Look at the message on the top, new events available. Okay, so let's go ahead and refresh this and we should see that exception there. And let me copy this to the notepad so that we can see it better. Okay, so if you look at this exception, there are two exceptions actually. This is file not found exception and another exception, HTTP unhandled exception. So why do we have two? That's because first, the exception happened here and since you didn't handle that, you know, it got, you know, propagated till the application level and at the application level, you know, it, it has this unhandled exception which is wrapping this file not found exception. So the outer exception is HTTP unhandled exception and the inner exception is file not found exception. And if you look at the way we are logging it, we have exception type and the type of the exception, message, the exception message and the stack trace basically where you know that exception occurred similarly exception type here the message and stack trace and if you look at this it will specify the line number and the file where that error has occurred it has occurred on webform1.aspx.cs at line number 16 okay so now let's see how did we log this to the event viewer now if you look at this method itself the log method it's pretty simple it's a static method and it's it has got this parameter exception object okay and if you look at this exception object now if you look at the message that we have in the event viewer it has got the exception type message and stack trace okay so those are the you know like headings so how are we getting them look at this exception type that's a hard-coded string Okay, and if you look at what we are doing here, we are actually using a string builder object. Why aren't we be using string object and why are we using string builder? Because strings of type string are immutable, whereas strings of type string builder object are, are mutable. Because we are changing the string object several times, it's better to use string builder instead of string object for performance reasons. And again, we have talked about the differences between string and string builder objects in the C-sharp video series. So if you haven't checked those videos, I would encourage you to do so first before continuing with ASP.NET video series. Okay, so we have the string builder object and then to the string builder object, we are appending this hard-coded text exception type. And then you might be wondering, what is this environment.newline? Now, that is the you know, new line character that spits out new line character. What's new line character in C sharp? Backslash n. So instead of having that string, you know, environment dot new line, that's more readable. So we have that because if you look at the message, look at that. After exception type, the exception type is coming in the next line. That's because I have a new line character there. So I am appending that to this exception type. And then we are actually getting the exception type itself. How are we getting that? When we pass in this exception object, look at that, we are getting the type name and then printing that there. After that, I have two environment.newline strings that are appended. So obviously I will have, you know, one environment.line and then the other one there. Okay. And then we have this message and then another environment.newline and then the exception message itself. I'm getting the message property and then appending two new lines. And then finally, stack trace, getting the stack trace using the stack trace property and then two new lines. So we have got until this point. Okay, that's the outer exception. Okay, now we need to check if there is any inner exception. How do we check that? Exception dot inner exception property, look at the return type that returns another exception object if, if there is an inner exception. And we are storing that this inner in this inner exception variable. So while inner exception is not equal to null, what I have done here, I have copied this exact piece of code and pasted it here. 
all I have done here is instead of using here we are using the exception object but here we are using inner exception object it's exactly the same piece of code and then finally what we are doing we are saying inner exception is equal to inner exception dot inner exception in case if we have three levels of inner exceptions or four levels it's going to use this loop how many ever inner exceptions you have whatever is the depth it's going to go all the way till the bottom till the till the final inner exception retrieve the exception type message and stack trace and then it is getting appended to this you know string builder object sp exception message and then what we are doing this is where this is the only bit of piece of code that's required to log the exception to the windows event viewer so in system.diagnostics namespace we have called this event log class and this event log class has got this method source access if you remember yesterday we have created a you know the source as prajimtech.com okay because if you go to the windows event viewer look at that when i highlighted the, when i select this one look at the source prajimtech.com is the source and in the previous session we have seen how to create a custom windows source and windows log that is that source so we are checking is that source existing okay using source exists if that returns true the source is present so i'm creating a new event log object okay and look at the name of the event log i am passing in the name of the log here so that you know whenever you log a message that gets logged against this custom log and if you remember we have that custom log here prajim tech okay and then log dot source source name is prajim tech dot com we are specifying that here and finally this is the line that writes that object string object to the event viewer the write entry method and if you look at this write entry method it is taking in the message itself so string builder object dot to string that returns the string out of that string builder object and then the the second parameter is like what type of you know entry do you want do you want an error entry or information entry or audit entry what it is okay so because if you look at the event viewer look at the application for example you can have several types you can you have information errors etc so if you right click on that and say filter current log you can see the different types of event log entries critical entries warning entries etc but exceptions are errors so we're going to log them as errors look at that it's logged as an error and to specify that how you want to log that uh, to the event viewer you use the second parameter event log entry type that's an enum and when i press dot you have all the entry types there it's an error okay so that's it so it's very simple i mean it looks big but then all this is a copy paste of the same piece of code and then the only line that's important to us is this write entry method it takes in the string that you want to write to and then specify what type of entry it is is it error information etc that's it we are done and then it's also possible now look at this since we are allowing this exception to get rolled up all the way till uh, application underscore error we have inner exceptions but if you have handled that where that exception has occurred then you wouldn't have this you know http unhandled exception let's quickly do that okay instead of allowing uh, the exception to roll up till the application level i can handle that exception here and log it to the event viewer how do we do that simply use the try catch blocks so i'm going to say try and then i'm going to use this catch block and then we catch whatever type of exception that happens and then all you have to do is ex dot i mean we use the logger class dot log and pass the exception object so it gets logged and then maybe you can show a meaningful error message to the user saying that file not found or whatever maybe we can have a label control on this web form and we can show to the user you know in this catch block a message okay but then i'm not going to do that now we are simply going to log that exception so let's go ahead and run this now 
or you can redirect the user to errors page depending on what your application is trying to do you can either redirect uh, the user to the custom errors page or you can display on this web form in a label control an error message stating that the file is not found it completely depends on the application requirement so let me go ahead and run this and obviously we get an exception but nothing will be shown here because we are not doing anything we are simply logging that exception so let's go back to the event viewer and refresh this look at that I got an exception but then let me copy this exception to a file I mean to a notepad and if you look at that I just have one exception that's because at the first chance I handled that exception I didn't allow that to be unhandled when you allow that to be unhandled and you handle it in global.asax it's going to be wrapped inside an unhandled exception that's going to act the, the HTTP unhandled exception will be the outer exception and whatever exception that initially cost you know to get it rolled up till the application level is going to be the inner exception okay on this slide you can find resources for ASP.NET C Sharp and SQL Server interview questions that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day